Get out of my house. It's okay, Mumbo. You, you did your job. You did good, bro. I still can't believe the Inferno uses real lava in their attraction. I mean, it's grunty, so I mean, sure, but come on now. All right. We're gonna go outside Wumpa's Wigwam now, because there's something we can do here. There's something that... Well, I probably could have done this earlier, but... I didn't- I wanted to make sure the power to the saucer apparel was on first. But we're gonna ride the gondola. Cause this'll take us over to the saucer apparel attraction. So we go here, we can do a high jump. Ah! Really? Sometimes the grabbing can be a little wonky. Sometimes. For the most part, it's pretty good. There we go. Take that. Alright, now what we gotta do is we gotta walk on this gondola line, or I'm just gonna jump hover. Oof. This is another good way of doing this. Climb and climb shimmy here. Step on this switch. And this will take us back to the beginning. Then if we fall on here... Press B to experience the scenic splendor of the cable car ride across to the space zone. Yes, please. I love how even the music changes as we go. <laughs> and I also love how this platform magically turns from wood into chrome when you enter Space Zone. Alright, there's a hollow honeycomb piece up here that we're gonna reach. <laughs> now, something you can actually do here, I believe, and we're gonna use the Amazing Gaze goggles just to uh, up it. If we shoot a grenade egg here, that will actually press the switch, which will make this a little bit easier. You can also just Brinkle Bash it once you get up to the top. Or do whatever, like, the, the dash attack is. And now, remember that UFO in the Fuel Depot from Glitter Gulch Mine? We just opened up that window for him. So now he's back in Witchy World, where he belongs. And that's the star of the Saucer of Peril attraction. We're gonna jump hover over here, grab on the wall. Once you've powered stuff up, occasionally these gaps here will electrocute you if you get too close. So wait for it to stop shocking, and then we shimmy your way across. Now hitting this switch here will create a shock jump disc down there, which gives us a shortcut back up here if we ever need it. Alright. So if we want, we can go back there and that'll take us to the Glitter Gulch Mine Fuel Depot, but we already know that. Hey, friend. Bleep! Jump on board to ride the exciting saucer of peril! Bleep! This is probably the coolest of all of the minigames right here. Very fun and actually legitimately kind of challenging. But actually, it's fun to play. Witchy World Saucer of Peril Ride. When the crosshair appears, press Z to fire at the targets to score points. Blue targets are worth three, green two, and red only one. To give you a chance, I'll give you some special eggs. Score 500 points to win first prize, or 400 points for the second prize. Bleep! Yeah, we need a lot of points here. This is a long minigame. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of similar to the Balloon Burst game, except we're on a, like, a, a ride that automatically moves for us. All we have to do is aim. So, uh, this might take you a couple of attempts, but this is a legitimately fun attraction. This is a fun minigame. And again, try to aim for the higher value to points. We already have 62 points, and this is a long minigame. Like, we basically go for all of Witchy World. Alright, off to the Star Spinner. And until you've turned the power on for this guy, he won't, he won't be able to play the video.
Sometimes the aiming on this can be a little tricky, but it's honestly pretty good. It's much better than, say, uh, Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Alright, 185 points, and we've only just left the space zone. So this is good. We've, we're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> hey, big Al! Check it out, man. What an attraction, like an actual UFO that takes you across which you I also love how it has in the night sky, even though it's daytime in the ILO packs. <laughs> Grunty puts a dome around her amusement park, just like people accuse Disney of doing. Do a barrel roll. Now we're going to the haunted zone. Unfortunately, we don't actually enter the inferno or the haunted cavern or anything over here. We're just driving around the zone. But that's okay. We're going to the western zone, and there's a lot of points in the crazy castle stockade. All right, free, free, free. Uh, we kind of got to pick it up a bit. We're more than halfway for the attraction now, so. But there's a ton of points in the Crazy Castle Stockade, so. Like a ton of points. Look at how close we get to these all are. All right, yeah, you want to have close to 450 points when you leave here, because the ride's now almost over. We're going to do one final lap around Witchy World, basically. And I really want to win both prizes. In one go. All right. It's going to be close. Now we're going to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Shoot all the blues. Oh, we're so close. Okay, we did. We did it. We're very close, though, because we're approaching Bunker 51, and this is where we finish. Alright, we got 550. Touchdown! That's a super fun minigame. Like, super well done, and well programmed, too. That's legitimately fun and not too difficult. Or, it is, it's nicely challenging. Bleep! Nice shooting! You win two bleeping prizes! A primitive paper theme? Bleep! That's second prize. And this shiny gold thing! Bleep! That's first prize. That's all my prize is gone, but why not ride again to try and beat your best score? Bleep! Bleep no. Alright, we have enough <laughs> Geo pages for the next cheat. Sweet. Alright, now we can go off to the star spinner. Now that that's powered up, shoot, should have become the van to pay for the Dodgem Dome. That's okay. Alright, now that it's powered up, what we can do is we can high jump onto this star platform. And it'll rise up. Now we can just jump hover from star platform to star platform as we go higher and higher and higher. Alright, once we get up here, okay. So one thing I actually learned, I believe that vandalism you destroy, you can destroy it that I didn't know about, I think that actually slows down this part up here, because normally I think it goes a bit faster. Because now we have to go into Talon Trot mode and jump up. No, 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 no. That was weird. Why did it not let me jump up there? I'm also kind of surprised I didn't die from that. Haha! <laughs> the ground pound gave me just enough height. Sweet. Alright, let's, right, let's try that again. This is a very interesting ride. There we go. Jump up there. Grab the jiggy. Okay. And again, best way to get down. Ground pound. And then on the recoil, just fall. Boom. All fall damage gone. Alright. Now, unless I'm mistaken, I think we're only missing three jiggies here. Yep. So one of them is for Mrs. Boggy's kids, which we can't do yet. We're missing five notes somewhere. Hmm. Don't like that.
I, 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 I bet they might just be on the path. On, like, the main path in Witchy World that I missed. I actually bet you that's where it is. Also, another thing I didn't know about, but from what I've been told, you can destroy the slot machines with, you guessed it, grenade eggs. Makes sense, but I like being the van and just running them all over. It's more cathartic. Oh, sure enough, yeah, that's where the final notes are. Alright, yeah, so we're missing three jiggies. One is for Mrs. Boggy's kids, which uh, we can't get yet. One of them is for the Dodgem Dome. And then the final one is for Kanga's Big Top, which I'm going to save for last. All right, Madam Grunty. Ah, welcome. I will now choose your fate. You win some gold feathers. Very nice. Wow, really? Ah, Madam Grunty is closing for a temporary refurbishment. Of course you are. All right, well, we got to become the van. <laughs> Gotta become the van, pay for the Dodge and Dome so we can actually ride the Dodge and Dome. I'm gonna be sad once Witchy World is over. It's one of my favorites. Or it is, it is this is my favorite part of the game. One of my favorites of all time. I It's so well done. I love exploring the world. It's not confusing. There's so much to explore. I love the different aesthetics. I love the overall theme park aesthetic. I like the returning characters. I like the mini games, which is very difficult to do in a, a video game. Pay hey, here to enter the Bone Jarring Dodgems Challenge. Bumper cars, heck yeah. The ride is now open. Cool. <laughs> I'll destroy the bumper cars with my real car. Not so fast! The Dodgems Challenge is only open to the stupid bear and bird together. So Mumbo can't ride it either? Man. <laughs> well, these attractions are designed to kill people, so I do want Banjo and Kazooie to do it. <laughs> Alright, that's all we have to do with the van. Alright, let's try the Dodgems as Banjo and Kazooie now. Dodgem Challenge, one versus one. <laughs> Leave that Twinklies alone! Let's see you collect 60 points worth of Twinklies in 45 seconds. Whack the bear! So here we just move, use the control stick to move around, and similar to the other games, blue Twinklies are worth three points, green ones are worth two, red ones are only worth one. So this guy's just gonna follow us around and try to bump us, and we just have to run around. It's a super easy minigame. Like this, this guy can't really do squat to us. It's not even a case of like we have to collect more than him. And the controls are not bad. The controls, it's literally, you move the stick in a direction, you will move in that direction. <gasps> the crowd is, the crowd is going wild. And for good reason. Every time I pick up a Twinkly, they're like, oh my gosh! Hmm, not bad! You've beaten game one with 68 points! Now try my second challenge! So these minigames are still fun, it's just, they're very easy. And short. Dodge them challenge, two versus one. Uh, which one is the gas pedal? Let's see who collects 50 points worth of Twinkies in 45 seconds. Whack the bear! So now we've got two guys chasing after us, which really isn't that much of a, more of a problem. They might slow you down a little bit more if they can, like, corn you like that, but you also don't have to collect as many Twinkies this time. So, it more than makes up for it. 
just try not to go directly into the wall, allowing them to ram into you. Like, try to come in from the side. Also, if they run over a Twinkly, then it'll destroy the Twinkly. Also, I like how the Twinklies come back as well. Yeah, because I kind of drove right into the corner with no escape plan, they were able to ram me in there for a while. But it's still very easy. I have, again, more than... I might even get more points than last time. Yeah, I actually got more points this time. Hey, what's this? You've beaten Game True with 72 points, but they're still my third challenge. Challenge number three is where things actually get hard and annoying. Dodge and challenge three versus one. You're in for a real ramen this time, pal. Who are these aliens that Grunty <laughs> allowed to join? Let's see you collect 40 points worth of Twinklies in 45 seconds. Whack the bear. So we don't have to get that many points, but dealing with three guys all at once is very annoying, especially if they can just ram you into the wall like this. They are significantly more annoying to deal with, and I recommend just kind of doing laps around them once you can get ahead of them, and avoid having them just ram you into the corner at all costs. Even if it means taking a less than ideal path, you do not want to get rammed into a corner like I did at the beginning. But as long as you do this, they'll just all kind of follow you, and then they can't really do a lot. They'll still slow you down, but... Again, we only need 40 points, and... Oh, you've beaten Game 3 with 64 points. How appropriate, 64. I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of prize. That's right. Hand it over, you bony hag. It's nice of Grunty to actually give us uh, give us jiggies for completing her minigames. She's not without honor. All right, 28 jiggies. Boom, bang, baby. <laughs> I, did, I couldn't see his legs moving, so it looked like he was just kind of skating across the ground there. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Mrs. Boggy about her fat kid, and then we're gonna go into the Conga's big top. Hey, your kid is obese. Thanks for bringing the little scamp back. There's still another one to find, though. Oh, um, yeah, he, he's in the inferno, and he's too fat to move. How is he too fat to move? I kind of gave him a hamburger. Don't kill me, please. Is Madame Grunty's still... Actually, wait. Okay. I actually don't want to go to Madame Grunty's and get beatings because... We're... Well, you'll see. We're gonna just finish this up. Big top interior. Huh. I see you have enough tickets now. We sure do, monkey boy. That's my shift over then. Enjoy the show. Come on, Banjo. Let's go grab a seat. Where do you think our seat will be? I can't see any seats. Maybe we're supposed to sit on this big lump on the floor over here. Doesn't look very comfy. It's boss time. I wanted full HP for this boss, because this boss is actually legitimately really difficult. Oh dear, not more intruders! Well, I'll show you who's boss! See how big and strong Mr. Patch is? Pa! Ah, uh, you're not all that big, really. That Klungo freak near the start was probably bigger than that. Oh yeah? Well, how about this then? Oop. Mr. Patch, strange, wobbly, inflatable vein. <laughs> He's an inflatable dinosaur balloon. I suppose you think you're clever, don't you? Well, one doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet. Oh, I sense a battle coming on. If you insist. So this is Mr. Patch. He has the best boss music in the entire game. 
and he is actually a legitimately difficult fight. So what we gotta do is we gotta hit his patches that are all of his body grenade eggs. The problem is he's constantly moving, which can make aiming them very difficult. There we go. No! Oh, you found the weak point! Well, it looks like I might need some help here. You'll have to beat me from the air now! So now he's gonna summon a bunch of these molehills which will punch us if we try to hit him on the ground. But he also creates a flight pad for us. Mr. Patch, like Grunty, actually wants a fair fight, which I approve of. Gotta fill up on grenade eggs, which will thankfully respawn as the battle goes. And let's hope you have the aerial egg game. So this is the problem. Mr. Patch will shoot these rubber balls at us that will blow up, and they can be hard to dodge. You can also accidentally blow yourself up, which is more often than not what happens, because you want to get close to him so you can aim properly, but you also don't want to be so close that you blow yourself up. He also has 12 patches around his body over there. This is such a fun fight, though. It really makes you feel like a fighter pilot. It's also, it's also again, it's difficult, but it's the right kind of difficult. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. At least I did avoided fall damage, but I pulled up too late. I was aiming too far down. Ouch! Stupid low health. Yeah, this is a fight you want to go in with full HP, because you will be taking a lot of damage in this fight, most likely. He also gets faster the more patches you blow up. Right, he only has two left, and I think one's on the back of his head. Thankfully, because the grenade eggs make an explosion, you don't have to be perfect with your aim, but you do need to aim right. right. There you go. There are your last two patches. Wow, I've never beaten him that easily. He's a legit tough fight. Uh-oh! Looks like trouble! I freaking love that fight. I freaking love that fight. Mr. Patch is a great character. I love his design. I adore his boss music. And that's a fun, legitimately challenging fight. I also want to point out that apparently people have studied it. And this entire Big Top Tense inside is larger than the entire world of Mumbo's Mountain in the first game. <laughs> that gives you an idea of scale. <laughs> That is... oh my gosh. That fight is one of the best in the whole game. This game has a lot of really good boss fights, but Mr. Patch, I feel like, has the best balance of, like, challenge and fun. Really fun fight. And again, I've never beaten him that easily. I can't believe I blew up his patches that quickly. Because oftentimes there will be, like, one or two that is, like, this is so hard to hit. You kind of want to hit the tiny ones in the hard-to-reach part of his body first when he's at his slowest. Oh, that fight is so good. That fight is absolutely amazing. Love that fight. Love that fight. And he's a fan favorite. <sighs> what a great way to end Witchy World. With one of the best boss fights ever. Actually, the perfect way to end Witchy World is to go... Actually, no, Madame Grunty's is still closed, so we actually can't do that. Alrighty then. After a long-winded uh, journey to Witchy World, we have gotten everything except a single Jiggy. We'll have to rescue Mrs. Boggy's last kid later on in the game once we get there, but we collected everything else. So that's going to do it for this uh, video of Banjo-Tooie. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. We will be off to World 4, which is a very unique world and another fan favorite for a variety of reasons. And that'll be a fun one to explore. Look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.